Hey friends, Peter Fasciano here. Welcome back to my comparison series on the M6 Mark II and the Canon R6. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at the sensor sizes and what you're getting with the M6 Mark II with the APS-C sensor with the 1.6 crop and what you're getting or giving up when you're using a full frame sensor on the Canon R6. Let's go ahead and jump into today's video. Okay, so before we actually get into showing the photo differences or the differences within the sensors as far as pictures go, let's go and talk a little bit about full frame equivalency. Whenever somebody takes a picture with a crop sensor camera or an APS-C sensor like the M6 Mark II, it has a sensor size that is 22 millimeters by 14 millimeters, roughly. And if you were to take a look at the the full frame sensor on the R6, we're looking at something that's 36 millimeters by 24 millimeters. So that's the size difference in the sensors. And basically what happens when somebody talks about full frame equivalency. If I were to take a picture using my 400 millimeter lens on my M6 Mark II, that image is going to look a lot larger if I were to take the, the same image using the 400 millimeter on the full frame sensor. So when we talk about full frame equivalency, it's just a reference point to the full frame sensor. It doesn't change the lens. The 400 millimeter is still a 400 millimeter lens. I'm just putting it on a different body. I'm still using 5.6 as an aperture and that doesn't change if I put it on a different body. The mechanics of the lens do not change, but the perceived image does change. So when we talk about full frame equivalency, we're just using the full frame as the reference point and wondering, well, if I were to take this exact same picture on the full frame camera, what would I need to use? Well, if I'm using a 400 millimeter lens on my M6 Mark II, if you multiply that by 1.6, which is the crop factor for Canon, that gives you a, a 640 millimeter lens equivalency and an F9 equivalency. So if I wanted to replicate the exact same image taken on my M6 Mark II with the 400 millimeter lens, I would have to use a 640 millimeter lens shot at F9 on a full frame camera. And that will give me an equivalent field of view. It'll give me an equivalent looking picture. But that's not what this video is about. This video is all about what that crop factor actually looks like and what you're getting or losing when you're using the crop sensor and the full frame sensor. So the pictures that I'm gonna roll in here, again, are going to be pictures based on how I use the camera. So the whole idea of me getting the M6 Mark II was the crop factor. Since I do a lot of wildlife, I need that extra reach. I need that 1.6 crop that is found in the APS-C size sensors rather than have a full frame sensor. So a little backstory, if you guys have been following my channel for a while, you know that I purchased the R6 and returned it because I was so used to having that 1.6 crop factor that extra reach that I get when I'm out doing wildlife, it was it was a noticeable difference and I wanted to have that extra reach. So, I, so what I ended up doing is repurchasing the R6, but I also got a 1.4 teleconverter and a times two teleconverter. So the pictures that I'm gonna throw in here right now are pictures of the M6 Mark II with and without the teleconverters, along with the R6 with and without the teleconverters. And then I'm gonna just go and completely take the teleconverters off and just show you raw pictures based on the actual 400 millimeter lens being used on both cameras. So the first picture that you're seeing here is a picture of a cormorant and it is about 130 yards away. And again, let me jump in here once again and kind of mess the flow up. If you're shooting a subject and the, and the subject is far away, too far away, no matter what, it's just gonna to be too far away. So some of these images are just images that I captured before my M6 broke on me. Um, I actually don't have the M6 right now. I sent it back to Canon and they're repairing the front shutter button. Well, actually they're not repairing at all. They're sending me a whole new unit. The uh, front dial, anytime you touch it, it brings up the menu in the back of the camera on the LCD screen. Or if you barely touch it, it'll jump from shutter speed of whatever you have it set at to the bulb mode. So I had to send it back. It's gonna cost me like 300 and I think, what is it, $360 to replace the unit. So there's that. All right, back to the pictures. So the picture of the cormorant 
I think it's 130 yards away. And then I put the 1.4 extender on it or the teleconverter, brings it a little closer. There's a little bit of haziness around the picture. It's pretty soft. And then I put the times two teleconverter or the extender, I don't know what you guys wanna call them. So these three pictures compare it to now the R6. This is the picture, the exact same thing. So I basically just took the lens off of the M6 Mark II, put it onto the R5 and then, or sorry, the R6, and then just shot the same uh, series of pictures. So this one is a picture of the same cormorant, 130 yards away without the teleconverter, just strictly out of camera. Then I put the teleconverter on it, 1.4 first, and then the two times teleconverter after that. And as you can see, the times two teleconverter on the R6 actually has a cleaner looking image, but it's still further away. The next series of pictures, I've just eliminated the teleconverter completely. And as you can tell now, this is the 400 millimeter on the M6 Mark II and the 400 millimeter on the R6. So using the 400 millimeter on the M6 Mark II, this gives you a full frame equivalent of 640 millimeters. So again, if you're taking the exact same picture, but using a full frame camera, you would need to have a 640 millimeter lens to give you the same appearance of the same picture taken with the 400 millimeter on the crop sensor camera. Now I've been doing a lot of birding lately, a lot of wildlife photography over the past year. And it's looking like the majority of the photographers that I'm following on YouTube are basically have two cameras in their bags. They have a crop sensor camera and they have a full frame sensor camera in their bag. I have seen them actually talk about this. Like they're, they're looking at it like, oh man, I wish I had more reach. And they do, they just swap out their full frame camera with their crop sensor camera and they end up getting that extra reach and they end up getting a, a, a photo that they, that they would not have normally gotten with the full frame. So there is a benefit to having a, actually two bodies in your bag, a crop sensor when you need that extra reach and then the full frame sensor when you're looking for that uh, better ISO performance so, you know, I'm not saying that one is better than the other. It's just an extra tool to have in your, in your photography bag. The last set of pictures here is gonna be of a great blue heron. And one of the aspects of wildlife photography, whether it's birds or animals in the wild, you want to control the distance to your subject. That's gonna make the world of difference. And you basically want to get as close as you can without disturbing the wildlife and to fill the frame in the camera with the image. So with the picture here, I have 400 millimeter again on both cameras. And as you can tell, the great blue heron is much larger in the frame. And this is without a crop in any way. This is just straight out of camera. Compare that to the R6, same lens, but you can see more of the scene and less detail in the bird. So there you guys have it. That's, that's pretty much all I have for you today. This video was simply just to show you the actual crop factor within the M6 Mark II. Compare that to the R6 and the full frame sensor. This is not saying that again, that one is better than the other. This is just showing you what that actual crop factor looks like in a real life situation. And again, if a subject is too far away, no matter what, it's just too far away. And the last thing, and then I'm gonna call it a day. The last thing is the R6 actually has a crop factor mode. So if you wanted to change your full frame sensor into a crop sensor camera, you can change the, the mode on the camera and put it as a 1.6 crop. So keep in mind, you will lose some of your megapixels. So you're gonna end up dropping down to 7.8 megapixels instead of 20 when you're in the 1.6 crop mode. So that's all I have for you guys today. Go ahead and give me a uh, thumbs up or a like. If you're not a subscriber, go ahead and click on that subscribe button, turn on that bell notification. Put some comments down below. Let me know whether you guys prefer the look of a full frame or if you need that extra reach with a crop uh, sensor camera. And I guess that's where I'm gonna leave it today. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.